This short presentation looks at the interpretation of this seismic profile, which comes from part of the North Sea, and it's a classic example of a salt dome. You can find this and the interpretation on the Virtual Seismic Atlas, but let's have a look at how we can build the interpretation. First of all, where's the salt? It's here. And you'll notice the base of the salt rises beneath the thicker part of the salt as an example of seismic pull-up, which is a velocity artefact. Anyway, we're not worried about that so much as what happens above the salt to get an idea of the stratigraphic relationships and the timing of salt mobility. So I think it's useful when interpreting seismic like this to start at the surface and work back down towards the salt. So here is the younger strata in here, and I'll pick another horizon there, and I've noticed that there's an unconformity which I picked in purple because the strata below seem to be truncated. There are those lower strata which I picked out in green, and finally another package there in that sort of mauve colour. Now let's pick out some internal reflectors within each of these units, starting at the top, and I can identify that under the seabed these reflectors are pretty much continuous, but as you approach the yellow package below, the lower reflectors seem to pinch out sideways across the what is above the top of the salt dome. So in other words, there's a slightly thicker package of the uh, brown unit either side of above the salt dome, suggests that the, there's broad doming going on, so at least the older part of this brown package in here is synkinematic with respect to the deformation. Let's continue now and look down in the yellow package and I can trace out reflectors like this which are terminated upwards against what we're interpreting as an erosional unconformity that's taken off the top, rather like slicing the top off a boiled egg. But within the yellow itself, those reflectors that we picked out within the yellow formation appear parallel to one another, so those look like they were deposited when there was not much activity going on. They've just been planed off later. And it's that erosion across the crest of the dome that explains the different thicknesses within the yellow formation. So we say in the top of this package in here has been eroded, but that internally the yellow retains thickness, so it's presumably deposited when the salt was not moving. This is different for the green horizon. Here's our internal reflector pattern. Hard to pick it out across the crest, and there may be some minor faulting in the crest of the dome. So I've marked that with a question mark. Hard to see what's going on, but there's not massive thickness changes there, really. But across the whole system, there is. In the synclines, this green unit is thicker than across the crest of the dome. And there seems to be local onlap of some reflectors within the green package in here. And so the green package appears to be synchinematic with respect to salt motion. Now let's move down to the mauve horizon, and in here we can pick stratal reflectors through here, and this layer is pretty much constant thickness, so presumably it's pre-kinematic with respect to the salt mobility. So we can summarise all these relationships together here. Now let's take this information and build a chronostratigraphic chart. So here we're putting the salt at the base, it's the oldest rock, and we're going to build the stratigraphy up systematically towards younger, which will plot higher on the diagram. And we're going to build it bottom up. So let's start off with this mauve horizon in here. Constant thickness, no terminations, so it plots across the whole area like this, all these stratal reflectors, in other words these timelines, running right across, constant deposition, across the top of the salt. So therefore this package was deposited before the salt was mobile. However, the green layer on top shows variable thickness and local onlaps within itself, which we can plot schematically like this. These internal onlaps reflect patches of non-deposition which correspond to the main part of the salt dome and certainly its flanks. But the upper part of the green package appears to be eroded. We can just reprise this by going back to the section and having a look. That little wavy purple marker in there is the unconformity, the erosional structure that's taken off the crest of the salt dome. Now let's turn our attention to the yellow. And the yellow seems to seal across the top of the whole system in here. But is truncated at its upper surface against a second unconformity labelled there. So erosion of the yellow 
preferentially across the crest of the fold structure, that is the manifestation of the salt dome at depth. But because the yellow appears to be constant thickness apart from that erosional process, it looks like it's behaving as a post kinematic succession. In other words, the salt wasn't moving at the time the yellow rocks were deposited. So there's our unconformity. Again, we ask the question is there a time gap associated with this unconformity? And there's local pinch out in the brown onto the crest of a dome structure above the salt dome itself. And we can represent this on the chronostratigraphic chart like this, and it may suggest that the salt dome reactivated later. So there's our history represented on the chronostratigraphic chart. And down the left hand side, we can interpret the strata in terms of its relationship to salt mobility as either being pre salt mobility, syn kinematic, post kinematic, and whether indeed there's been a slight reactivation of the salt, so the salt moved in pulses. So, an example there of taking apart the stratigraphy around a salt dome.